The Life and Sad Ending of Nell Carter Nell Carter, born Nell Ruth Hardy, was born September 13, 1948, in Birmingham, Alabama. She was one of nine children born to Horace and Edna May Hardy. When she was two years old, her father was electrocuted when he stepped on a live power line in full view of Nell. As a child, she began singing on a local gospel radio show and was a member of the church choir. At the age of 15, she began performing with the Renaissance Ensemble that played at area coffee houses and gay bars. On July 5, 1965, Hardy, then 16 years old, was raped at gunpoint by a man she knew who gave her a ride home from a performance with the Renaissance Ensemble. Hardy became pregnant and gave birth to a daughter, Tracy, the following year. Hardy attempted to raise Tracy alone, but found it too difficult. She sent Tracy to live with her elder sister, Willie. At the age of 19, Hardy left Birmingham and moved to New York City with the Renaissance Ensemble, changing her surname to Carter. While living in New York City, Carter sang in coffee shops before landing her first role on Broadway in 1971. She made her Broadway debut in the 1971 rock opera, Soon, which closed after three performances. She was the music director for the 1974 West Beth Playwrights Feminist Collective's production of What Time of Night It Is. Carter appeared alongside Betty Davis in the 1974 stage musical Miss Moffat, based on Davis's earlier film The Corn is Green. The show closed before making it to Broadway. She broke into stardom in the musical Ain't Misbehavin', for which she won a Tony Award in 1978. She won an Emmy for the same role in a televised performance in 1982. Additional Broadway credits included Dude and Annie. In 1979, she had a part in the Milos Forman directed musical film adaptation of Hair. Her vocal talents are showcased throughout the motion picture soundtrack. In 1978, Carter was cast as Effie White in the Broadway musical Dreamgirls, but departed the production during development to take a television role on the ABC soap opera Ryan's Hope in New York. When Dreamgirls premiered in late 1981, Jennifer Holliday had taken over the lead. In 1981, Carter also took a role on television's The Misadventures of Sheriff Lobo, before landing the lead role of Nell Harper on the sitcom Gimme a Break. The series was a rating hit for NBC and earned Carter a Golden Globe and Emmy Award nominations. Gimme a Break aired from 1981 to 1987. In August of 1987, after the cancellation of the show, Carter returned to the nightclub circuit with a five-month national tour with comedian Joan Rivers. In 1989, she shot a pilot for the NBC entitled Morton's By the Bay which aired as a one-time special in May of that year. In this, Carter played the assistant to the owner of a banquet hall, and the focus was on her and her madcap staff. NBC passed on the series' development. In October of that same year, she performed the Star-Spangled Banner prior to Game 4 of the 1989 World Series, played at Candlestick Park in San Francisco, California. The following year, Carter starred in the CBS comedy You Take the Kids. The series, which was perceived as being the black answer to Roseanne due to its portrayal of a working-class African-American family, featured Carter as a crass, no-nonsense mother and wife. You Take the Kids faced poor ratings and reviews and had a month's run from December 1990 to January 1991. During the early 1990s, Carter appeared in low-budget films, TV specials, and on game shows such as Match Game 90 and To Tell the Truth. She co-starred in Hangin' with Mr. Cooper from 1993 to 95. In the mid-1990s, Carter appeared on Broadway in a revival of Annie as Miss Hannigan. She was upset when commercials promoting the show used a different actress, Marsha Lewis, a white actress, as Miss Hannigan. The producers stated that the commercials, which were made during an earlier production, were too costly to reshoot. Carter said racism played part in the decision. Carter was later replaced by Sally Struthers. 
In 2001, she appeared as a special guest star on the pilot episode of the new WB show Reba and continued with the show, making three appearances in season one. The following year, Carter made two appearances on Allie McBeal. The following year had her rehearsing for a production of Raisin, a stage musical of A Raisin in the Sun in Long Beach, California, and filming a movie, Swing. Carter's final on-screen appearance was in the comedy film Back by Midnight. It was released in 2005, two years after her death. In her personal life, Carter married mathematician and lumber executive George Krenicki, and she converted to Judaism in 1982. Carter filed for divorce from Krenicki in 1989. That divorce was finalized in 1992. Carter had three children, daughter Tracy and sons Joshua and Daniel. She adopted both Joshua and Daniel as newborns over a four-month period. In 1992, Carter had surgery to repair two aneurysms and married Roger LaRoque in June. She divorced LaRoque the next year. Carter declared bankruptcy in 1995 and again in 2002. She also had three miscarriages. Carter attempted suicide in the early 1980s, and she entered a drug detoxification facility around 1985 to break a long-standing cocaine addiction. Sadly, on January 23, 2003, Carter collapsed and died at her home in Beverly Hills. Her body was discovered that night by her son, Joshua. Carter's death was the likely result of probable arteriosclerotic heart disease with diabetes a contributing condition. She was 54 years old. Carter is buried at Hillside Memorial Park Cemetery in Los Angeles.